Hello, everybody. I was going to stream this, but I'm not able to find the way to do that. So those that are listening, welcome. Those who hear this later, welcome. I just thought I'd take a little time today uh, to talk a little bit about part of my water journey. Since I've been walking 71 years this time around, I've had a little bit of journey. And I thought I'd explain some of the um, water elements of that especially as they're so relevant now with everything happening around us and water being the primary focus of all of it. Uh, primary focus of symptoms of what's going in, primary focus of healing that needs to be done um, with our planet for us. Um, primary focus of all beings who are now waking up to just how bad things have become and how good they can be. And that's what I want to think about and talk about today. I go way back um, 71 years in my pre-teens even, hiking in the mountains with my father who loved um, nature and really loved water. He always seemed to find ways, places where there was water. We would often go up along the Delaware River in Pennsylvania, up to this Boy Scout camp that he went to when he was a child. So we're talking, oh, I don't know how long ago now, um, 100 years, more. Um, there was a place there we would hike. You'd start next to the river, we'd start going uphill. There was a small trail. Uh, there was a little stream running alongside this trail. And then it got bigger as you got higher because it was just one stream that later split into many streams down near the bottom when we started. And so we would head up there. We'd have, we'd have some lunch and a backpack. Um, We'd enjoy our time. We'd take our time. We'd be laughing and kidding. My father would be teaching us, uh, no, don't break that stick. Leave it alone. Uh, yes, go ahead and carefully take that stone if you've looked around and make sure there's plenty of others. And on and on and on. We'd get thirsty on a hot day because it was often uh, summer we'd do this. And so we'd stop and, and we would reach into the stream and cup some water and drink. Oh, Wonderful, delicious. Did we ever get sick? No. Did we even think about drinking water out of the stream? No, it's what you did. <laughs> We'd go up near the top uh, and there was a big abutment of rock. It was called the devil's table for one thing. It was called other things as well. You had to walk out on a thin, narrow ledge of rock to get this round surface that was supported by a column of rock beautiful area. It looked out over the river, uh, the Delaware River. You could see a couple islands in the river. Usually somebody was was canoeing or boating down below. Not many, um, but a few. And we'd sit there and we would have a little fire there. So my father would bring in some dry wood that we found along the way. And it wasn't a big fire, just enough to usually cook some hot dogs maybe we brought. My brother and I loved hot dogs. Um, I can't tolerate them now, can't touch them. <laughs> uh, and we'd have hot dogs, we'd have something to drink. We'd go again, we'd clean everything uh, as best we could, usually with leaves carefully and a little bit of water from the stream. And we'd drink, drink from the stream again. Sometimes we'd go a little bit further up and there was nice places you could fish and we would catch a fish, which would become lunch. Once again, never thought anything about it. So we did this for years and I, I never much thought about it till years later when I went up there and realized you couldn't drink out of the stream anymore. Not if you didn't want to get sick. You really shouldn't catch those fish because you don't know what's polluting them. You could look to the river and know that not many miles below you was a nuclear plant that had been fought for years because of the hot water poured from the plant into the river. Uh, it's long gone now. Luckily, it was finally shut down. But I, I started to realize when these things changed and all my meanderings in nature, when I was much older, several decades, a couple decades later anyway, I'd start going to Belize in Central America. And my first time there, I, I remember we landed in, in Belize City. And um, I had students that I was going to be with for a number of weeks five or six weeks, coming in a couple of days, but I had a couple of free days first. Um, 
I went down a little bit early. Don't know why, but I was just moved to do it. The university allowed me. Um, so I got into a boat, which would take you out to the islands, which was where we were starting. We were going to move all around Belize, visit all the natural areas, teach from those. Uh, but most of them around water because Belize is a lot of water. Inland, upland, of course, along the um, coast, the reefs, some of the best reefs in the world. Um, so I took this boat out, not knowing where to sit or not sit. I'm sorry. And um, I got soaking wet because all the spray came back in. It felt really good because it was hot. Got to the island and there were no cars to speak of. There were a few on the island for delivering things and so forth. Very small island. It's called a K, C-A-Y-E, K. -A -Y -E -K. Um, so I immediately started walking and I walked out into the areas of the mangrove. There were some little trails into it, if you were careful, which I was, I didn't want to damage anything. And so that started my walks with water there. I sat that first day for hours in the mangrove. Uh, just feeling the energy there, feeling the water that was coming from upland and down through the country and down into the water along the coast and then feeding the mangroves. The mangroves at the same time protected some of that shoreline because it, it, it filtered the water that was coming in. So it was quite an ecosystem and I started to learn about it. Oh. I'm just feeling that place again. Stop for a minute. Feel it. Yeah, I want you to feel it. That's it. That's it. I want you to feel one of the times I went out with the people into the marine preserve, which was all along the coast there. Uh, Two thirds of Belize um, marine area was in a preserve. Not many people to police it, however. So it was always a situation, but I knew the, some of the uh, people who were part of that. Um, and so I went out with them and I went um, snorkeling for the first time. Went down into the water with two Belizean friends. And I looked to one side and I almost swallowed water, a huge, huge fish, it looked like a whale to me, was there. I turned and there was another huge one on the other side. So here was the three of us hanging in the water below these two huge fish. I was told later they were called giant perch and they were enormous. They could be big enough to be a whale in, in another setting. Mm. I felt their power, I felt their energy. I felt how much they belong there. I was the visitor, not intruder, because I was there in, in a good way. I was there to learn and to feel, and I did. <laughs> and so we'd, we'd teach the kids all about the area down there. Our college students would teach some of it as well when we went into the schools there. And Belizean college students would join as well. So I did that for a number of years. Hmm. <laughs> All these things fed my love for the water, my love for its energy, its life-giving source, which we need, of course, uh, my love for giving up some of its food for us, and my real love for its spiritual essence. It's where I really, I think, set my spiritual being into place. A lot of other areas as well. I talked about the Redwoods the other day. Absolutely. So when time came many, many years later, five or six years ago now, that Standing Rock began. All about the water. I had friends in Pine Ridge Reservation, which is not far below, a couple hours below Standing Rock, I suppose. Um, who called and asked me to cover that in the virtual realm because no one was. I didn't really want to, but after another couple of calls from people at Standing Rock, who my friends had 
said I would be willing to do this if they pushed me. Um, they were right. So we started that and I went up to Standing Rock and I met with LaDonna. There's a video that Sue uh, Gray Wolf and I did about that, our visit up there, right at the beginning of the protest, meeting with LaDonna, why we established what we did. But Standing Rock became critical because it opened the world up to what's going on with water, our waters, the animals' waters, specifically Mother Earth's waters that we are allowed to use if we do it intelligently. If we do it sustainably, which we have not, now water is on the New York Stock Exchange, an absolute travesty. It shows that we are still in that, well, let's go as long as we can and then just die as a species mentality. I don't accept that. I don't accept that's going to happen. I was taught by my elders, uh, many elders, and there's a question. Yes, many different elders, okay. Uh, I am a mongrel. I'll just take a second to do this. I was born Romani Gypsy. My grandmother was a medicine woman in Northern Italy and Southern Switzerland. Um, that part of my family were shepherds. And so there were different clans. My grandmother was a medicine woman for four clans. She told me this. Um, I didn't know until years later that this was actually uh, true that I was Romani Gypsy when I did a DNA test. At the same time that I found out I had Native American blood and a few other smatterings, but they were the two primary ones. And so I'm also a, a member of the United Western Lenape tribe out of Kentucky. So uh, my elders were my grandmother to start with, although not much because then she took her journey into the spirit realm. Um, but I've had Mayan elders, uh, Lakota elders, elders from um, some of the tribes in Northern California Aboriginal elders, um, who am I missing? Garifuna from Africa, a lot of different ones. So I've learned many different ways, many different ways to appreciate water. And each and every one of those cultures, water is a prime part of their spiritual journey and of their life journey every day, every day journey. Mm. So now as we have these things going on, we know we have to recognize our waters. We know we have to appreciate our waters. You know, we have to respect our waters. Waters are beings as well. In most indigenous ways, everything, everything is, is a community. The trees, the standing people, the rocks, the waters, uh, the animals, of course, four-legged, we two-legged animals all important, all critical, all deserving of respect and a place to live. If we take away any of those, our life is less. And so as I walk the waters now, and I, and I hope to get out there again soon, uh, to be recording things, to be sending things back from out there, like I've done in the past, but even more importantly now, because things are shifting so dramatically. I ask you to respect these waters as well. I ask you to think about them today to sit this little part of my journey, little bits and pieces. I'll record other um, more specific ones like I did on the Redwoods the other day as we go along. But I want you to just think about the waters, think about nature, think about our earth, think about what it is we need to do and how important it is. And you know what, how easy it is. It's not hard. We have to change where this is. We have to go more into this heart. And then it's not hard to change our behaviors. It doesn't take that much. I started White Otter Academy about a year ago because of the waters. In the middle of the night, I had a, a vision of starting this academy, teaching about nature, waters, but also teaching basic skills, um, speaking, public speaking, writing. Those things are important now. Storytelling is public speaking. If you can't speak, how can you share your story? And so I'm working with people to get those things, just like others did with me on Passing Down. Everybody has a story. Now is the time to share them so that we can come together, unite, and move ahead. Walk with the waters. Feel the waters. Let the waters wash over you, literally or in spirit. 
and have a beautiful, beautiful day. Matakuyase, all my relations. I am you, you are me. I feel your spirit, do you feel mine? Many different greetings of different cultures. Aho. See you again soon. <laughs>